Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the life cycle of the day. So all of you are aware uh, that whenever a life cycle is posted, uh, it's in continuation. For those who have not been a part of the previous life cycles, uh, trematodes done, cystodes done. Uh, we've done with three organisms of nematodes also and today we are talking about the next nematode and that is uh, Wuscheraria bancrofti, basically starting with the Filaria. Before I begin, uh, let me just give you a quick recap that uh, currently, uh, that is starting exactly after a day, on 29th of March, there are two courses that are starting on the Unacademy platform. These are going to be the plus courses and these plus courses include uh, one for the next 2022 exam that is coming up next year. And the other one is for the students who are appearing this year in the month of June. Those are the MCI or the FMG students. So two batches coming up. The next exam uh, batch is going to be an evening session extending from 29th March up till August. And the FMG batch obviously is going to be wrapped up earlier because the exam happens to fall in June. So these are the two batches starting. And in case you wish to subscribe, then you can definitely log into the app and see the subscription plans. Well, starting with the life cycle of the day, like I said, the life cycle is that of Usheraria bancrofti, basically talking about the Filaria. Well, uh, the first thing you can see is like for most of the nematodes, uh, the host is something I need not worry about because I can only see a human host out here. So we just need to know what gets it infected, how does the development occur and then what uh, is the, uh, the diagnostic form in this case. So let us begin number one. So here we have a man, we'll dissect that life cycle. So how does the man get the infection? The man gets the infection when the mosquito takes a blood meal. So when the mosquito takes a blood meal, first of all, which mosquito am I talking about? I'm talking about Culex. Uh, can Anopheles and Aedes also be associated with it? Yes. Okay, so when the blood meal is taken, then please remember in that blood meal, what is actually entering the skin of the human? It is the L3 larva. So what is the infective form? It's the L3 larva, which has come into the skin, penetrated the skin by the mosquito bite. And thereafter, this is going to go and develop into adults in the lymphatics. So that larva will enter into the lymphatics and develop into adults. You can see male and female. Okay, so once the male and female adults are present in the lymphatics, the adults will obviously produce uh, microfilaria. The adults will produce microfilaria and these microfilaria are uh, going to be released in the lymphatics also, in the blood also. So these microfilaria, they are released in the lymphatics as well as in the blood. Fine. So if the... Uh, if the disease has to spread, how would it do so? What comes and takes that microfilaria away from the blood? So again, when the mosquito takes a blood meal, the mosquito is taking the microfilaria this time. So can I say the infective form coming from the mosquito to the man was the L3 larva and the form that is going from the man to the mosquito in a blood meal is the microfilaria. Once the mosquito has taken the microfilaria, all of you, I'm going to tell you there are some filarial species which have their microfilaria has a sheath around them. So if this is the microfilaria, they will have a sheath around them. Okay. So in Buscheraria bancrofti, it is a sheathed microfilaria. Okay. It has a sheath around it. We'll have a separate session of five minutes in the coming days where I'll give you the full table of which has a sheath, which doesn't, which has the nuclei, which doesn't. That's going to be a summary class. But for the time being, I'm telling you that yes, the microfilaria has the sheath. Okay. This microfilaria has the sheath, which the mosquito has taken up. Now, once it has gone in the mosquito, the microfilaria will shed the sheath. The sheath is shed off and this microfilaria then goes into the mosquito's midgut. It goes into the mosquito's midgut. It is going to penetrate through the midgut and it is going to go into the thoracic muscle of the mosquito. It is going to go into the thoracic muscle of the mosquito. What larva is going to develop over there? L1 larva that is further going to develop form L3 larva and all of you know that um, 
this after see like i said l1 larva then l3 larva this is then going to migrate to the head and the neck in the mosquito's proboscis it is going to head into migrate into the head and the neck region is going to block the proboscis and when the mosquito now takes a blood meal on us it regurgitates that l3 larva into us into our skin it rego because the proboscis is totally uh, clogged with the l3 larva so once it takes a blood meal it pours or vomits out all the l3 larva into the skin so a quick repetition of the life cycle within less than a minute this is the life cycle in total that i'm talking about man is the only host here or man is the uh, one that i'm talking about getting infected over here from whom what's the vector it's coming via the mosquito which form does the mosquito liberate in us when it takes a blood meal when it uh, what is given it is going to be the l3 larva okay the adults are formed in the lymphatics the microfilaria is laid down that is going to be shed off intermittently in the blood and the uh, lymphatics the microfilaria they are sheathed microfilaria these microfilaria are going to be picked up when the mosquito comes and takes the next blood meal in the microfilaria the sheath is shed off it goes into the midgut it goes into the thoracic muscle l1 larva is formed l3 larva is formed that l3 larva migrates to the head and neck proboscis is clogged and next time when the mosquito takes a blood meal it is going to give that l3 larva to us well that finishes off the cycle life cycle of usheraria bancrofti or filaria and just a small homework for all of you before i end the session which of the following has a sheathed microfilaria remember the key points which of the following has a sheathed microfilaria with nuclei extending till the tip of the microfilaria so sheathed with nuclei extending till the tip of the microfilaria well so the answer to this uh, question is going to be loa loa but i think all of you would know that there is always a confusion which of them are sheathed which of them are not sheathed which of them have nuclei that are extending to the tip which are the ones which don't have a nuclei extending to the tip so i am going to tell you some quick mnemonics over here but remember the entire table i'll be discussing in the end so if i have to give you very quick mnemonics over here if you have to know which of them has a nuclei till the tip and which of them doesn't so if this is the tail end and you ask me which of them has the nuclei coming till the tip which of them doesn't have the nuclei coming till the tip so remember in wuscheraria bancrofti the nuclei have vanished the nuclei have vanished they will not be present at the tip in wuscheraria bancrofti vanished in loa loa l4 line the nuclei come till the tip in the form of a line see like a line the nuclei are coming till the tip in brugia malai we have by nucleate we have two nuclei at the tip so if this is the organism tail end you will have two nuclei present at the tip b for brugia b for by and in oncocerca volvulus o for obstruction there has been an obstruction somewhere obstruction means the nuclei are unable to come till the tip the nuclei are not at the tip so there are many more filarial species that we have and we need to know i've just given you a you can say a preview into that mnemonic to solve this question but if i ask you that which is the one which is sheathed non sheathed having nuclei not having nuclei that full table we'll be doing once we are done with all the life cycles so in the end we'll make a summary table so for the time being you've learned that definitely uh, the one which is sheathed and has nuclei till the extending till the tip of the organism is going to be brugia malai well that's it from my side guys from for the day and uh, i hope to see you all tomorrow morning at uh, 7:45 7:45 am i hope all of you are aware there is a free special class that takes place on the unacademy app and the topic for tomorrow is the immunofluorescence questions today also we had some immunofluorescence questions tomorrow we are going to continue tomorrow we'll talk about the immunofluorescence of autoimmune disorders and some skin lesions so do watch out for that thank you so much much for joining in and hoping to see you all tomorrow morning 7:45 on the unacademy app have a great day